Good morning, everyone. It is so wonderful to be here. Can we give Dancing Is My Voice a round of applause for this awesome event they're putting on? Yes, I had the opportunity to be here last year and it was just phenomenal. So I know you guys are gonna have a great time today. My name again is Miss Tiffany Doerth and I have known Lisa for a while now and I'm so thankful for this opportunity. When I was a junior and senior in high school, I experienced sexual assault from a classmate. Day after day, he sexually assaulted me. That was such a traumatic experience for me that it took me five years to start working through it. Because what happened was all those memories, I suppressed them because I just couldn't handle dealing with them. During those five years, I ended up having multiple traumatic experiences. Two of them were attempts in rape, and one was an attempted kidnapping. The attempted rape was something that happened my freshman year of high school, or excuse me, freshman year of college. So mind you, I'm 17 years old, just graduated from high school. I'm going to two different colleges, a private college and a secular college. And at the secular college, I just wanted to have friends. I wanted it to mingle with everyone and just love on everyone and just have a great time. There were a specific group of girls that I wanted to get close to, but for some reason they just didn't like me. There were a couple of guys that saw what was happening and said, you know what, don't worry about them, come hang out with us. So I was like, okay. So I hung out with them and they gave me a lot of encouragement, don't worry about the girls, you can hang out with us. And me, I didn't realize that that caused the girls to not like me even more. So there ended up being a housewarming party. At first, I wasn't planning on going because I didn't really know anyone. The girls said, you know what, you should really come. We really want you to come. So in my mind, I'm like, yes, they're my friends now. They want me to join them at the housewarming party. So I go to the housewarming party and everyone just is excited to see me, at least the group of girls. They were excited to see me and they welcomed me into the circle. Later on in the party, one of the girls said, hey Tiffany, I want to show you something. Let's go to the back room real quick. I said, okay. So I followed her in the back room. She said, oh my goodness, I forgot what I was going to show you in the car. I'll be right back. And she left. So I was in the room alone. Then a guy walked into the room. And the look in his eyes, I still remember it to this day. It was as if he was a lion that locked eyes with his prey. And there was this eerie feeling in the atmosphere. He walked up to me, he said something sexual towards me, I can't remember what it was, but when he walked up to me, he pushed me on the bed. Thankfully, I have an older brother who's into martial arts and he taught me how to fight. So I literally had to fight my way out of the room that night. When I got to the main living area, everybody was gone. And that moment was when I decided I'm not trusting people anymore. And I would put up walls. Even people who were kind and genuine, I would put up walls because I just didn't trust them. I didn't know if somebody was going to set me up for something again. There were times where people would invite me to events, and I'd say, no, I'm not going. At the very last minute, I would show up to make sure they didn't have time to set me up for something. A couple other things that I experienced after that was not understanding that there's different types of relationships. So in order for me to learn how to trust again to start laying down those walls, I had to go back to the fundamentals, recognizing that there are strangers, there's acquaintances, then there are friends, there are friends who are in your inner circle, and then there's intimacy people. And I had to learn how to categorize people in these different categories. And based on which category they're in, determines how much trust I have with them. So these girls, I thought they were my friends, but in reality, they weren't responsible enough with my trust. The guy, I didn't even really know him, so he was just a stranger. Fast forwarding to five years down the road, the initial sexual assault that I experienced in junior and mid, and excuse me, in high, my junior and senior year of high school, all those memories came flooding back, and that is when my true journey of healing began. And so during that journey, I began to learn how to trust people again. And I would do little tests. 
And I don't encourage it you. Every once in a while, look at your friends, see which category they're in, and put them through a little test. So I'll give you an example. A few months ago, I went on a date, and we had been talking for a couple of weeks, and it was our first date. After the date, he said, hey, there's this other place that I want to go check out. Let's go. I said, you know what? No, thank you. I'm tired. I'm going to go ahead and go home. He said, no, no, no. You don't understand. It's an awesome place. You'll like it. You'll enjoy it. We'll just hang out for a little bit longer, get a couple of drinks. I said, no, thank you. I really am tired. I really just want to go home. But he would not take no for an answer. He just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Now, just for a moment, can you imagine if he was in my friend zone and we were in an intimate setting and I kept telling him no and he wouldn't listen, he had that same reaction. Can you imagine how that could end up? So even though he's in my acquaintance category, I realized at that moment, because he's not being respectful to me saying no thank you, he's no longer in my life. He has no place in my life because he can't even respect me while he's my acquaintance. And that's something that took me a long time to learn. The last lesson I'll share with you that I learned throughout this entire healing process was this concept of self-perception. The way we view ourselves is a direct correlation to how people treat us. It's a direct relationship to how people interact with us. So even though I didn't have any memories of the sexual assault during high school, I acted as if I was someone who had low self-esteem. I grew up in a very healthy household. My parents were very supportive, so there was no reason for me to have low self-esteem. But because of that sexual assault, it changed how I view myself. I saw myself as an object. I saw myself as worthless. I saw myself as someone who was unlovable and deserved to be treated poorly. They were verbally abusive mentally and emotionally abusive. Not until I started my healing process did I realize that I'm the common denominator. I'm the one that's connected to all these people. So what is it about me that keeps attracting these guys? And I realized it's because of how I saw myself. So I had to do a lot of counseling to realize, you know what? I am an amazing person. I am valuable. Despite how others talk, or treated me in the past is not a direct reflection of who I am. I am someone who is lovable. I am smart. That was one of the things that the guy that I had dated for two years who was verbally abusive, he would tell me that I was dumb. Now mind you, I should have automatically known because I graduated high school when I was 17 and I was going to two colleges my freshman year. But yet, I believed him because he said it over and over and over. How many of you guys realize if we hear something long enough, often enough, sometimes we'll end up believing it? And that was the case for me. I felt like I really was a dumb person, and I didn't deserve better. Not until after counseling did I realize, you know, I actually am pretty intelligent. I really can interact with people appropriately, and I can see myself in a healthy way, and require others to see me in a healthy way. So the last few minutes, I just want to encourage you guys that if you know people that are in your life who continuously put you down and who don't see your value, begin to question your relationship with them. Ask yourself, should they really be in my friend zone or should I move them down to a stranger or maybe an occasional acquaintance because I might have to see them at work or even it's a family member. I might have to move them down to an acquaintance because you might have to, again, see them at a dinner. But just because you have to interact with someone doesn't mean you automatically have to put them into your intimacy level, which means you give them a lot of your trust. People have to just let you know that they can be responsible with your trust. I want to thank, again, Lisa so much for this opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to her.